Hi there. This is the Old Stuff Show. Welcome. My name is Fred. Uh, the purpose of the show is to uh, inform you about a variety of antiques and collectibles. Uh, we'll look at uh, where you can find them, what, uh, where, how much they cost, uh, what their uh, history is, and uh, just generally have some fun uh, uh, looking at the uh, whole scope of a variety of things. Today we're going to focus on old picture frames and uh, vintage photographs. Um, this is a collectible that is uh, fairly popular and uh, not overly expensive to get into and uh, readily available. Um, some of these items are from my personal collection. Others uh, can be found on my uh, eBay site, which I will give you more information about towards the end of the program. Um, so let's start with old photographs. The um, history of the old photograph really begins in the middle of the 19th century, around uh, 1845. Uh, there's three types that essentially uh, come into play at that time. Uh, the, f the first will be the CDV, which is the carte de visite. Uh, it's a photograph uh, th three by four inches on a hardback cardboard back, and uh, usually a picture of a uh, person, and uh, on the back the uh, phot photographer or the place that it was taken. Uh, these are quite collectible. They, they took the, car the place of the uh, calling cards around that time, so there was um, a little more interest in, uh, you know, having, um, the pers having it personalized in that time. Uh, those didn't last. They weren't that strong in terms of the quality of the cardboard. And uh, so they thought they'd come up with something that was a little more durable at that time. And so they came up with uh, something we call today the tintype. Tintype would look something like this. It's a um, photograph essentially on a piece of tin, and maybe about uh, two inches by three or three and a half inches. Uh, and uh, simply transfer it onto the, uh, onto the tin. Um, there's um, basically this size, there's, there's a size a little smaller as well. Uh, the the uh, subject matter is usually a people, a person, a couple of people, and uh, taken in a studio, and, and that was about it. Um, these um, were taken over uh, in the uh, oh, late 1890s or 1900s by a bigger version of that type of thing, and it was called the cabinet card. Uh, maybe about four inches by six inches uh, on a solid um, cardboard backing. And uh, by this time, people could afford more to have ph photographers take their pictures, and uh, they were, um, and they're, they're very readily available today. There's lots of pictures like that out there. And you would see the photographer and where the photographer was from on uh, the front of the picture in the back. Uh, popularization of uh, use of photographs, as I said, was uh, around the turn of the century, early 1900s, and um, today uh, you'll see all kinds of these at flea markets and, and so on, and uh, many of them are in original albums. Um, the um, picture of the, um, uh, of the, of the individuals, uh, the, mainly the, uh, the uh, commonplace thing was to see people but those who are real collectors they like to find pictures that have interiors interiors of uh, Victorian homes uh, something a little different so this becomes a little more specialized in terms of a collectible um, I know of people even who uh, collect uh, photographs of the deceased who uh, was laid to rest in the uh, in the um, parlors of these Victorian homes for viewing um, odd collectible but there are people that uh, that do that one of the uh, the other this would be a good example here of a, of a hard hardback type thing it, this one is of a, a boy scout at the time um, also back in the, in the, uh, the uh, 19th century there were um, instead of negatives that we know of with the uh, snapshots this is a glass negative and um, these are kind of hard to find, but uh, when you find them, you know, they're, they're very interesting. The picture that I have here was taken from that very, that very um, glass negative. It's a parade in a uh, town nearby where I live, um, showing the um, people, the storefronts, the, the, uh, the, the items in, in the parade. It's kind of interesting. 
very collectible for the people who uh, live in that, that town and uh, just from the whole idea of the importance of parades at the turn of the century, the, uh, it was a pretty special time for, the, for those citizens. Um, the uh, old pictures also showed up, but more in an entertainment situation with um, stereo cards, stereo view cards. Uh, this required a uh, stereo optic uh, viewer and uh, very big collectible today and uh, just a host of uh, different um, kinds of subject matter. Um, this one is royalty, but there's lots of military and uh, scenic views of various countries. And, um, you know, they, they become quite collectible as time goes on. Uh, people like to uh, do uh, specialty kind of picture taking. Uh, so if you went back, you know, this becomes like an entertainment sort of thing. Uh, in um, the family, gives a little bit of uh, fun history, background of the family. Uh, sometimes people too like to have special occasions where you could you could see the uh, the, the special uh, transportation with the horses and the buggies, and uh, photographs capture that moment. Um, sometimes too, you, you would see just a a, a formal picture of a family in, in their finest and uh, taken to preserve their their memories and share with their uh, with their family in my own case I have to say that I have a couple of things that I found very interesting and I'm going to try and show you this one one picture on the bottom here um, that is actually my father with his you can see his hand behind his back my mother is carrying me, and what my parents told me was that that photograph was taken by, ingeniously, I might add, by my father having a long string to the to the uh, picture uh, taking apparatus, and when he pulled it, uh, the picture was taken, and so that picture was taken apparently by that method, which is really interesting when you think of today's technology. And uh, also, another thing I found interesting, for, for my own sake here, is the, this picture, there I am, eating an ice cream cone. And I would be, I don't know, about six years, seven years old. Uh, what's interesting for me is the fact that I'm kind of known today to like ice cream. So my family uh, history shows that I like that right from the very beginning of, uh, of my life. So uh, it kind of captures the moment of, my uh, my habits right up to uh, to today in many ways. Um, uh, after the um, early 1900s, uh, there was the brownie camera came in, and uh, this allowed the average person to take all kinds of photographs very quickly, and, and uh, so um, they uh, were popular. The brownie camera was popularized by uh, Kodak and uh, allowed for snapshots to be taken. Uh, snapshots then would have been uh, taken by uh, this camera and instead of a glass negative there was a, a uh, kind of a emulsion type uh, negative available uh, which I can't see. There it is. Um, and um, it would look something like this. These you find today and they still are just like the glass negative um, they, they can be developed by a professional uh, camera shop. Um, so those those uh, snapshots came into vogue in the 20s, 30s, 40s, even in, up to the 50s. And then the technology took over where some really, really uh, good cameras were developed and all the way through the through time after that up to the today, which is cell phones and iPads and so on, taking a lot of our photographs. But uh, Photographs had a long history between 1850 and, say, 1950. Um, now, the thing about photographs, a couple of things. Um, I know that um, many families are uh, have shoeboxes full of pictures, but they haven't a clue as to who these people are. So that's one lesson to be learned when you uh, have a chance to take those pictures and make sure if you have relatives who can identify them that you write on the back who they are to preserve it for future generations. 
Also, I've seen a lot of family pictures and that in beautiful albums. Some of the old Victorian albums are very ornate and again, some people just have no idea who these people are and uh, they end up selling it to people like myself. And uh, they're, so they're quite collectible and they, they command a, a bit of money depending on what the, the photographs are about. Um, one of the things that I um, didn't mention too was uh, there's another type of collectible, photograph collectible, and that's the uh, panorama picture, which is a rollout, and it can roll out to you know maybe about three feet in some cases. Um, these would be about say three feet long and maybe ten ten inches high. Sometimes framed, sometimes not. The most common uh, subject matter for that would be uh, military uh, regiments. Um, also, uh, schools would have all their students in front of the school and a picture would be taken. Uh, factories did the same thing. Um, so if there's anything else, a uh, different subject matter for that, it is quite collectible. I had one that uh, showed the uh, building of a, of a, of a, a part of a, uh, of a college here. So uh, that's a very rare type of thing to find. Um, so how to preserve these, I mean, it's got to be a priority. When you talk about family, pictures play a very important role. Got to pre you have to identify them, but once you have, you know, take them out of a shoebox, put them in an album. Sometimes, uh, you know, uh, people like scrapbooking, they like to present it in, a, in an interesting manner. Um, but I think family history can be more than just photographs. Family history should be a collection of uh, many different things. Uh, I like the oral history part because I think if you can interview your relatives, uh, the older relatives who can tell you about what life was like when they were younger, that's a very, very important part of your, uh, of your history. And I, I, may, I have written books on oral history for my own community and preserved memories of a lot of older people. And that's, that's just great. Um, another thing is any kind of artifacts that you might have that are family related. In my case, I was able to retrieve a, a, a glass, wind, glass panel out of a door from, uh, from Holland, where my parents uh, uh, came from. And it was the uh, store that my great grandfather had started and the, the family name was still on the glass. So I was able to, uh, to uh, bring that back and I have it in my home. Also in that, above that door was an old bell and uh, that bell had been there since the 1880s, 1884. And uh, I have that as well. So sometimes these artifacts, uh, it's, they're hard to find, but uh, if you can find them, uh, they're well worth uh, doing. Certainly family trees, there's lots of help online for family trees. And uh, so all of that kind of information uh, combined with the uh, photographs uh, will give you a, a, a complete look at your at your family history so I might get into that again on another on another program um, so where can you display these and how can you display these well the um, picture that I showed you a minute ago here is in kind of an interesting frame if we get into uh, picture frames old antique uh, picture frames uh, there's some pretty nice ones and I know somebody who just collects the frames for they're being interesting frames. Uh, you can put anything in the frames. You can put your own family pictures. You can put uh, just pictures that act, act as accent pieces for your home. Um, and uh, you can create your own family if you want uh, without knowing who they are. But um, the picture frame certainly is uh, a, a great collectible. And, and again, not too, too expensive and, and fairly easy to find. Um, they can be ornate, they can be plain, but uh, ornate seems to be the thing that people like to collect. Anything interesting with uh, carvings and so on. Shapes, sometimes they're oval, sometimes they're square, sometimes they're rectangular, depending on, uh, on what, you, uh, what you've been able to find. Um, some of the ornate ones are uh, interesting, like this is not old, this is a repro, but it's still interesting and you can put a photograph in it to make it look um, vintage. Uh, you can just put a photograph like that, for example, in there and uh, it would show up qu quite nicely. Um, a personal collection, I have um, some artwork that's quite interesting and what I've tried to do is get old, old uh, frames that would uh, make the artwork uh, stand out. Sometimes I bought them with interesting old frames, which is part of why I would buy it. Um, 
so good art, I think, uh, demands a good good quality uh, frame, and uh, so I've got a display of that uh, type of thing in my own house um, for interest sake. The um, frames uh, that are really collectible, like in the early Victorian times, the uh, convex frame, the curved frame uh, shape uh, with uh, inside the uh, sometimes oval, inside a beautiful frame. Um, these are often uh, in old homes showing their the, the individuals, the, the father, the mother, sometimes a young son went to war and you'll see the, those kinds of uh, pictures in those kinds of frames. Um, as I say, shapes of frames are uh, vary from rectangular to square to oval uh, and the composition of them, the wood is common, most common. Carved makes it more interesting and uh, also there's uh, metal ones that uh, that come out that are, are quite interesting as well. So um, picture frames can be kind of fun to find. So where do you find these? Um, typically, uh, you know, um, antique shops will, uh, and those would be maybe more money than, than normal, will uh, have some pretty, pretty nice uh, art or photographs in uh, some very fancy frames. Uh, if you're prepared to pay a little more, that's one, one place. Auctions as well. Online auctions seem to be the, the, the going thing today, so you can, you can look up these and uh, order them online. Um, the uh, art shops, like I was able myself to uh, buy a, a picture of um, a painting, actually, by my uh, grandfather that I didn't know existed, and I happened to find it on the internet, so it was in a nice frame, and uh, someday I'll show you that. Um, flea markets. Flea markets uh, are hit and miss. Sometimes you'll find a dealer there that uh, deals in some neat old uh, old stuff and uh, you'll find the frames and the photographs there. Garage sales, the same thing. Depends if you get lucky. I think you want to make a point though, of, you know, if you have a grandparent, making sure you go to uh, their home if they've lived in a home for a while. Go to their home, look in the attic, look in the basement, make sure that uh, any of the old photographs that sometimes just show up in old boxes are looked at and taken out, cleaned up, identified, and taken care of for future generations. Uh, values, we go back to the photographs, typically the CDVs and the tin types and the cabinet cards, you know, average price might be around five dollars. Um, they could go higher depending on, on the uh, subject matter of the, uh, of the picture, but that's generally what it might be. Um, some people are looking for really special things like uh, Civil War um, carte de visites or Civil War uh, tin types or Civil War cabinet cards. They command a little more money. Um, as far as the um, cabinet cards and the little bigger versions of that, Average of five to ten dollars, maybe uh, really bigger ones would go twenty in the twenty dollar range. Um, the um, photographs, as far as the, um, the the snapshots, again that would just be like quite inexpensive, a dollar or two, depending on what the uh, what the subject matter is. Uh, I, I found a collection of uh, photographs taken by a soldier in World War One in World War One on the Russian front, and that was fascinating because he had a a record of his experience in the war. Uh, that's a very, very unusual thing to find. Um, but uh, that would be worth uh, a, fair, a fair amount of money. Um, as far as the frames, uh, I, it varies. Again, it depends on what's in the picture, what's what's there, the, if it's art, if it's a photograph, uh, the, uh, the um, uh, type of frame, if it's really quite uh, elaborate. Uh, I've seen them go for you know as low as twenty-five dollars and as high as a hundred dollars. It depends on what it's all about. Um, but uh, they're they're certainly out there and uh, worth uh, worth checking out. Um, so it's it can be a fun hobby. I think that uh, if you're looking for something uh, in the way of uh, compact, uh, relatively inexpensive. Um, you, you, and 
finding it, it'd be relatively easy. Sometimes the hunt is as, as much fun as, uh, and as exciting as the find. So uh, hunting for these things is, uh, is one part of collecting. And um, I like that idea of getting out there. It's a, it's a fun hobby in retirement. It can be a fun hobby just to, to get away from your job. Um, and um, you don't have to spend a lot of money doing it. So uh, that's kind of the story with uh, old photographs and uh, old picture frames. Um, it's just a very general kind of overview. Um, but um, from time to time on eBay, I will put um, a lot of the, uh, I don't like to, to deal too much with the very oversized, uh, especially like frames and so on. But uh, a lot of the smaller stuff um, I put on uh, the old photographs and uh, the tin types and, and that type of thing. So if you wanted to see what I do have on, on eBay, my uh, moniker, my, my ID is uh, Lonrem. So that's L-O-N-R-E-M. So if you're familiar with eBay and you, uh, you find the, the, the site uh, with all the Lawn Ram stuff, that's me. And uh, that stuff is on there for, uh, for you to, to purchase. And if you're not an eBay area, you can still look at it. And uh, if you find things that are interesting, then you have to, you have to sign up. But you, you can uh, find it as a, as a resource too to find out what things are, are selling and what they're worth. Um, so that would be about it for today. I hope you enjoyed the, the program. Uh, I want to do more. Uh, I plan to uh, take a, a different kind of collectible the next time. Um, and as time goes on, I would like to uh, also uh, deal with uh, flea market finds. Um, all the stuff that people are, are kind of interested in when uh, they, they think about collecting. So th that's it for today and uh, I hope you enjoyed everything and uh, we'll hope to see you again. Goodbye for now.